I don't think that's ever gonna get old. What's up, YouTube? It's your boy, BMAC. And if this is your first time here to the channel, welcome. Thanks for stopping by. Make sure you smash that subscribe button with all notifications turned on so that you never miss another video on this channel. And if you've been here before or if you're already subscribed, Welcome back. So today we are talking about this puppy right here, the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 2 foldable 5G smartphone. <sighs> Buckle up, maybe grab some water. We've got a lot to break down when it comes to this thing. So let's get into it. First of which, which is kind of the most obvious, the design. Let's talk about the design of the Fold 2. In terms of build quality, the Z Fold 2 definitely feels of solid quality. You could feel that it's made out of premium materials. It feels well executed, well thought out. I will say the Fold 2 feels kind of heavy, kind of clunky, kind of big when it's in your hand, but mostly just when it's folded. So you kind of have two different experiences here. You kind of have a big kind of clunky, heavy feeling when you're using it in just your covered display mode. And then you have a thin, sleek kind of experience when you're using it in its main display or tablet mode. But while we're talking about that, switching between the two, obviously what's helping facilitate this is the hinge system. The hinge is very fluid, really well built, very strong. You see there's not a whole lot of flopping I mean, if you really flop it, sure, it'll go open, but there's not a whole lot of flopping going on with just turning it like this. It's gonna stay in its in its place. Why could I not think of that word? It's, it was, it's gonna stay in its place. And you need that because yes, it is important to have a fluid and sturdy hinge when you're opening the device up, but also if you happen to be using this device in tabletop mode, that's super helpful as well. This is also where the dual speakers on either side of the device will also come in handy for that tabletop mode. And even though the hinge does feel slightly looser than it did on day one, I definitely still think it's sturdy. I think it'll hold up. I'm not foreseeing any kind of loose hinge problems anywhere in the near future. In terms of colors, you have two different colors to choose from on the Fold 2. You have Mystic Black and Mystic Bronze. Obviously, had to go with the Mystic Black. But you do actually also have the ability to customize your hinge color if you buy the Fold 2 off the Samsung website, which I thought was pretty cool. An additional layer of personalization, customization. And all this is complete with a fingerprint reader built into the power button on the side of the device, which is awesome for either your main or your backup biometric unlocking system. But as a byproduct of the design, one thing we actually have to spend a lot of time talking about are the displays. The displays of the Fold 2 are what make this device so unique. On the Fold 2, as you can clearly see, and as we've been talking about, there are two displays. There's the cover display on the front, then if you open it up, you have the main display. The cover display is a 6.2 inch HD plus AMOLED display, which utilizes the entire front of the Z Fold 2 device Again, how it probably should have been all along with a convenient camera cutout right at the top for your quick selfies or for your face unlocking. You are also working with a 60 Hertz refresh rate on the cover display as well as 425 nits of brightness, which in my experience, even taking this outside has been pretty sufficient even in brightly lit situations. Open the full two up and you're gonna see this puppy right here, the 7.6 inch QXGA dynamic AMOLED display. It also has a convenient camera cutout on the top right hand corner of the display instead of any kind of notch. And you are also getting an HDR10 plus certification here on top of an adaptive 120 Hertz refresh rate. So beautiful contrast, beautiful colors, and all that in a beautiful high refresh rate display on the main display here once you open up the Fold 2. You are working with just about 460 nits of brightness on the main display, which again, even in brightly lit situations, even taking this outside, has been pretty sufficient for my needs. So on paper, Awesome tech specs. These are killer displays when you look at them from a tech spec perspective on the Fold 2, but here's the thing. As you can see, as much as I love this cover display, it has a 25 to nine aspect ratio, which is pretty narrow and honestly, it's kind of just weird. The thing about the cover display of the Fold 2 is that's kind of like your actual main display. That's what you're gonna get your notifications on. You're probably gonna text from that, take and receive calls, maybe a little bit of social media browsing, little web browsing but all those different tasks you're gonna be doing on the cover display just are a little clunky, a little weird with how narrow everything is. But above all else, the most tricky thing about the cover display on the Fold 2 for me has been the typing experience. Because of how narrow this cover display is and how close the actual keyboard keys are to one another, typing is kind of hit or miss. And even with autocorrect, whether I'm typing with two thumbs or just one in swipe mode, 
There's generally always one to two words that are still wrong in my sentences. The main display, on the other hand, pretty darn incredible and, dare I say, near perfect. The main display is so good that I've actually found myself using the main display over the cover display nine times out of 10, even for checking notifications. I don't really have any complaints about the aspect ratio on the main display. It works for my needs. It's almost like the perfect size. Again, maybe just a little bit wider, which would make the main display better. And of course, trickle over to that cover display when folded down. But I know a big question here is the seam. Can you see the seam? Is it obvious? What's the deal with the seam when you're folding this thing and unfolding it? When you are looking directly at the Fold 2 and maybe with the brightness jacked up a little bit, it gets pretty hard to see the seam. This is especially true when you're not in dark mode or when you're viewing content that just is based with a white background. I think that's just in terms of physics of how the phone works. I have noticed when I'm in dark mode in certain apps, if the lighting around me is somewhat bright, the seam kind of glistens in the light. But as it relates to the actual display, when you're looking at the display, you can't see the seam. One more thing I did want to mention, Samsung does actually ship the Fold 2 with a screen protector applied to the cover display and the main display. The two protectors actually feeling completely different. They're both plastic screen protectors, but the screen protector on the front definitely has a more glass kind of finish feel. Whereas on the inside, there's a screen protector for the main display that feels kind of tacky. It feels kind of weird, but it does obviously protect the displays, especially the main display. And honestly, I've kind of grown to like the feeling of that screen protector on the inside. I don't know why. But obviously we have to take a minute to talk about something I personally probably pay attention to the most in any smartphone, the camera system. What are the cameras like? in the Z Fold 2. Well, you have five, yes, five different lenses built into this device. You have a cover display selfie camera, a main display selfie camera, and then your rear facing camera setup with three different lenses there as well. The cover display camera is an f2.2 10 megapixel selfie camera. The main display camera is also a 10 megapixel f2.2 selfie camera. While the three lens rear camera system is composed of a 12 megapixel f2.2 ultra wide lens, a 12 megapixel f1.8 wide lens, and a 12 megapixel f2.4 tele lens, with both the wide and the tele lenses offering optical image stabilization. Little trick here, by the way, it is possible to use the ultra wide lens on the rear facing camera setup as your ultra wide selfie lens if you unfold the phone and use it this way. Pretty cool software feature there, I thought. So all in all, the cameras on the Z Fold 2 are solid, but not amazing. Don't get me wrong, the photos you'll come up with on the Z Fold 2 are probably pretty solid for your needs. They're definitely good for social media. I just think the Z Fold 2 doesn't really have any camera qualities that are making me go like crazy. You are gonna get that Samsung image science, so you'll get vibrant colors, high dynamic range with beautiful skies. Even night mode is gonna give you some pretty awesome results. So the camera is good, it's solid. And if you use the camera for video a lot on your device, you might wanna know that the Z Fold 2 is actually capable of up to 4K 60 frames per second and HDR 10 plus video recording. But backing all this up that we've just been talking about are some pretty impressive performance specs that are worth mentioning and breaking down for you here. We are getting the Snapdragon 865 plus in the Z Fold 2, complete with 12 gigs of RAM and and 256 gigs of storage space. And that's something I wanna point out, the fact that you do only get one storage option at 256 gigs on the Z Fold 2, at least here with the US version of this device. Only 256 gigs and on top of that, there is no expandable storage option. So 256 gigs, that's it, that, that's all you're getting. I thought that was a little bit odd, especially considering the expandable storage options you get on other Samsung devices. But besides that, the processor and the 12 gigs of RAM do make this device feel very snappy, really responsive, and pretty darn powerful. I can edit my photos within Lightroom, no problem. I can multitask on this thing like a breeze, and that's something I wanna point out. Multitasking on the Z Fold 2 is probably one of, if not the best multitasking experience you could get in a smartphone setup these days. Not just because of the design, but because of how multitasking is incorporated into the OS as well. So multitasking, Phenomenal on the Z Fold 2. But with all of that going on, obviously one thing we have to talk about is the battery. Your phone's only as good as, as, as long as it lasts for. We are actually getting two batteries that work together as one in the Z Fold 2, totaling 4,500 milliamp hours of battery capacity. I really can't give you exact numbers here for battery performance because your battery's gonna go a lot longer if you're using that cover display as opposed to cranking up the brightness and using that 120 hertz refresh rate main display, so, Tough to give exact numbers, but I would say with typical usage, based on my usage, you should be able to get at least a day, if not more, 
out of the battery on the Z Fold 2. Screen on time, I mean, again, this is gonna to totally depend on how you're actually using the device, but as an average figure five plus. And when it comes time to actually charge up your Z Fold 2, it is capable of USB-C 25 watt fast charging, which when testing, we found that the Z Fold 2 actually goes from about zero to 40% in 30 minutes, give or take, maybe zero to 80%, give or take in one hour. And you could probably go from zero to 100% a full charge in closer to an hour and a half. You could also wirelessly charge your Z Fold 2 at 11 watts. And with PowerShare, you do also get reverse wireless charging, the ability to charge your other Qi certified wireless charging capable devices at 4.5 watts. So with all this having been said, first of all, congratulations if you made it this far. I appreciate you being with me. What does that mean for my final thoughts? of the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 2 5G foldable smartphone. All in all, the Z Fold 2 has definitely impressed me. Is it perfect? No. Is there room for improvement? Yes. But is it solid? Absolutely. It is super impressive for what it does. It is definitely a positive foldable experience that I've personally had. Even just being able to have a device with a power backed behind the Z Fold 2 with a display this large that folds down and being able to put that in your pocket that in and of itself, incredible. I just really do think more work has to be done on the cover display. Because of how narrow it is, I found myself just continuously opening up the phone and going directly to the main display. And then also, quick little side note, we gotta improve those cameras. Give me cameras that are gonna blow my mind and then you pair everything else together. I'll, well, my mind's already blown because of this, but my mind would be even more blown. It'd be reblown, it'd be blown, it would, it, it would be gone. And maybe, just maybe, a way to incorporate a little hidden S Pen in that hinge. Maybe, possibly, no, I don't know, be cool to have. We'll see. As always, if you guys wanna find out more information about the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 2 or just to cop one for yourself, you guys could always head to my affiliate link, bmac.link slash Z Fold 2. bmac.link slash Z Fold 2, or as always, there will be a clickable link in the video description box below as well, so check that out. And with all that out of the way, I'm gonna go do a little bit more Kindle reading on my Fold 2. I've actually been doing more reading on the Fold 2 within the Kindle app than I've been doing on my actual Kindle lately. Just goes to show how cool this thing is. I will see you guys in my next video. We started the video this way, we're gonna end it this way. And cut.